140 here. I was just looking at the front page of the Washington Post, and apparently Bibi Netanyahu is not in control of everything that's going on in Israel. Netanyahu's power in question amid Israel's judicial push. I mean, seriously, is there any politician who's just always in power, who always just gets his way, who always dominates his coalition? Washington Post says... The chaotic events in the first seven months of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's new governments have fed speculation that he doesn't control his coalition as much as it controls him. Well, guess who's the boss in Israel? It's the very same entity that is the boss in your life and in my life and in the life of Joe Biden and Donald Trump. The situation is the boss, right? There's no Prime Minister who completely controls his coalition 95 plus percent of the time. All right, every politician has to operate in different situations. The situations are constantly changing. You're a boss. You might be under, you know, undermined by the lowest person on the totem pole who might do something that triggers a whole chain of reaction that uh, distracts you from what you should be paying attention to and leads to catac- cataclysmic results. You might be on the way to the Fox News TV studio to be interviewed to be a star and your car breaks down, and then you get an Uber, and your Uber gets in a crash, right? And so the situation's the boss, right? I walk down the street, and pedestrians have the right of way in California, but often drivers will just roll through stop signs. They will run you over if you don't jump out of the way. Now, I have the right of way by the law, but if I insist on the right of way, then I'll be dead right. And, uh, had this this young woman who's very impressed by my body of work. She's quite intrigued, and so we're carrying on some pretty intense conversations over the, the past week or so, and she sent me some very provocative, fully clothed, very, very modest uh, photos today. As you know, if you know anything about me, I'm a very respectable man. And so we made arrangements to, to meet at this very posh Beverly Hills Hotel, and I wanted to make sure there was an appropriate chaperone, that you know her friend would be there so everything would be kosher and dinky dye, true blue, fair dinkum, above board. But uh, as I get there, there are all these jokes that they're going to saddle me with some $800 hotel bill, right? These, these children of billionaires just playing with, with my affections, right? I, I'm a fair dinkum bloke, all right? I, I said I can only drink tea. I can only have, you know, ice water. I, I can't eat at this hotel. It's not kosher, but they play with my affections. And that's the way the world is. I remember for years and years and years, I carried this, this giant grudge against women that they somehow, they had all the power in the relationship and it was so humiliating to ask them out. It was so humiliating to make a move on them and to get knocked back. It was humiliating to try to kiss them and then they you know, say no. But then as I grew older and I got into 12-step programs, I realized that the women have all their own unique frustrations with men and lack of power. So... It's easy to think, oh, the prime minister is the boss, but the situation is the boss. The Palestinians and Joe Biden, they have a vote too. Uh, Bibi Netanyahu's coalition members, other parts of Israel, the judiciary, the armed forces, reservists, the elites, uh, the news media, right? A lot of different parties have a a vote in, in what goes on. Uh, you may have a wonderful relationship with your boss, but then he gets a, a toothache and he becomes, you know, quite quite upset with you, and uh, you know all the things that you thought you'd had lined up, all right? Like I thought I had this, you know, wonderful romantic uh, meeting at a very plush Beverly Hills hotel, and uh, did not go down as I expected. A very very poor taste in the jokes about you know saddling me with some eight hundred dollar hotel bill. I hadn't yet met the woman. I mean, come on, fair dinkum. I'm a very respectable man. Don't don't try that. Don't try that stuff on me. I mean, yeah, you think you can lure me with these very provocative photos, fully clothed, like fully modest, but still Okay, yeah, you you tapped into my weak spot. Like we all have weak spots and there's like a there's a certain look, right? There's a certain pose with women. There's a, just a certain way they they tilt and arrange their musculature. There's there's a certain look in their eyes, a certain alignment of their lips. Right, that that does make me go weak in the knees. And okay, I I said I need to I I, I want to meet you today. All right, so yeah, I was I was very eager, and I was willing to make some compromises, but uh, bloody hell, I mean th- this wasn't supposed to go down this way. I'm a I'm a very respectable man. 
Gosh. Right. Boss gets a headache. Next thing you know, you're trolling Bondi Beach for blokes and head jobs. Uh, I mean, these things could just start spiraling on you. So uh, anyway, just naive Washington Post article, chaotic events, the Fed speculation that Bibi Netanyahu doesn't control his coalition as much as it controls him. There's never been a prime minister that had 100% of his coalition all the time, right? Sometimes we control some things around us. Uh, usually we only have a modicum of an illusion of control, all right? And so we develop this body armory and these postures and these poses, and we take on these personas, and we pretend that we can lay, you know, a tapestry of meaning uh, over the universe, to quote the Aussie psychologist Matt Brown. And that's me, all right? I'm sure I do some fair dinkum streams where I primarily want to be useful, to be helpful, to be fun, to be funny. Uh, then, you know, some of my streams are just, you know, a pathetic, you know, ploy for, for attention. Uh, I, I think some of the time I'm just trying to be a guru and failing at it. So probably 10% of the time I'm probably trying to be a guru and failing at it, but it very may well be 90% of the time, you know, who knows how much I am deceiving myself. I mean, I wish I was as upstanding as Dennis Prager. I mean, this guy has, has pretty serious morals, and you can disagree with Dennis about this or that, but fair dinkum, take on these moral commitments here. I, no, I, I, I have the same commitment to honesty. Yes. I, I was a, a, Tangent th number 13. Yes. Oh, this is so a total tangent. I, 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 was, I was actually mentioning during my radio show that I'm so committed to always telling the truth to the best of my human ability when I receive scripts from sponsors, which I have all of my life, basically, if there's something in there that isn't true, and there almost always is, I'll give one example, I, I omit it. So, for example, almost every script that I have to read, if there's something so you contact my friends, friends at uh, Billy and Jerry does do this. Plumbing, and I, but if they're not my friends, I don't say it. I have, I have learned from you hugely in that regard, with the I mean, in so many yes. other ways, but with no, regard no, no, to ad right. advertising and omitting things that are not I always get a true. kick out of that. By the way, tangent again, this is a fun one. So not only do I not say it because it's not honest, I'm not sure it's effective. Right. Because if I say contact my friends... Yes, it's a then, nepotism. Then, well, well not, ne not only that, maybe people think, oh, the only reason he's well, right. endorsing them That's is because I mean. they're his friends. That's what I oh, mean. yeah, the nepotism. Okay, right. fair enough. Yes. <laughs> Why is that an effective line? You know, on on this point of honesty, and again, you're so right that this is just so Dennis and Julie to go off and exit ramp and come back on. It, that, that's beautiful. I mean, that's so meaningful. I think we can all, we can all draw inspiration from this kind of moral commitment and by the way do you guys know about healthy cell in private <laughs> they may well come out while i'm broadcasting well you know that and everyone knows that's something i'm trying to work on right so uh, i mean I, and I, it's true I, I, Powerful. I will occasionally use such a word because it's so profanity it's so Apt merited at the Apt moment yes, but, yes. yeah but it, i think i've heard you curse in private same maybe with grammar, twice. I, yeah you, well, you rarely right, curse. but when i do but when it, you do it's hilarious it, yes exactly that's yes. the point yes yes in 2008 the amount of concentrated time people could spend on a task without becoming distracted was 12 seconds five years later it was eight seconds. Digital age is narrowing our attention span. Trouble concentrating or recalling information is frustrating, embarrassing, and kills mm. productivity. Advanced nutrition company Healthy Cell created mm. Focus and Recall to boost your brain power. Unlike yes. other supplements that don't work, Focus and Recall is not a pill. It's a patent-pending gel you swallow. Look, the, these other supplements, I mean, there are so many shady supplements underlying right-wing talk radio, right-wing news, right-wing news magazines, uh, right-wing web publications. Isn't it good that there's a dinky dye, fair dinkum, true blue supplement here that really works? Thank God. Thank you, Dennis. Follow with ultra absorption of science-backed ingredients wow. to help you immediately sharpen focus, concentrate longer, and strengthen recall. These physician-formulated gels come in a small gel pack, tear off the top, shoot it down, or mix it in water. Over a thousand. Wow, they're physician formulated, blokes. <laughs> oh man, physician formulated? Healthy cell. This really can help you reach your potential. <laughs> and there's there's a supplement here for REM sleep, REM sleep. Have you tried the immune super boost? The the bioactive multi, the focus recall, and the vegan essentials. So important. Each of them can just transform your life. Don't you want to reach your potential? Thank God. Thank you, Dennis. Reviews with an average star rating over 4.5 prove wow. it works. Supercharge wow. your brain and see the difference. That really does prove it works. I mean, people buy reviews, but I, I don't think that's true here. This is fair dinkum, dinky die, true blue stuff. Let's go to healthycell.com 
Use the limited time code Prager, P-R-A-G-E-R, for 20% off your first order. Risk-free. Love it or your money back guaranteed. HealthyCell.com code Prager. HealthyCell.com code Prager. Okay, back to contentment, and Wow, Healthy Cell. I mean, these blogs sound like really good people. You know who else are really good people? Leah Capital. Leah Capital, these are just the best blogs, guys. Common sense or daily understandings of how the world Thank works. God. So it begs the question, what has entered that space? Mm. Yep. What is it that people now know about? Mm. The Kardashians. Instead, well, mm. unfortunately, the unfortunately, I do mind. know a lot about the Kardashians. We're going to go to the uh, uh, thought thought issue. Okay, before we move on to our next topic, I want to tell you all about Lear Capital. All of us, Wonderful. unfortunately, have lost money this year. With the current economic volatility, we've all got to find a way to protect our finances in retirement. Have you thought about it? One way to do this is to invest in gold. You should consider adding Lear Capital to your retirement as we are all looking for stable investments. The cost of everything nowadays is insane. And unfortunately, I think we're in this for a while. Did you know that you can add physical gold and silver into your IRA or 401k? If you want to learn more, call Lear Capital today and ask about the Lear Advantage IRA. You can transfer or roll over your old 401k or IRA into a gold tax-free and penalty-free account. And to sweeten the deal, Lear is offering free shipping on every purchase and up to $15,000 in bonus silver wow. to every qualified client. Call for details at wow. 1-800-260-5075. You can get a free Precious Metals Investor Guide and work with the top-rated Precious Metals Company on consumer affairs with a near-perfect rating wow. on Trustpilot. Lear wow. Capital is the gold standard in precious metals yes. investing and has over $3 yes. billion dollars in trusted transactions yeah. with over 650,000 happy customers in the 25 years they've been in business. Call 1-800-260-5075 to get your free kit. See how gold has performed during periods of inflation, government debt, interest rate hikes, economic crashes, and even wars, and you will see that gold has been that financial bedrock asset in portfolios. And what I love most about Lear Capital is that they're an American-owned company, proud to do business with Americans that share our conservative values. So write this number down and please give them a call today at 1-800-260-5075. That's 1-800-260-5075. 1-800-260-5075. And if you don't want to call, you can simply go to Lear Capital, L-E-A-R, learcapital.com. Great. They're the... They're the precious metals leader, uh, major sponsors of Dennis Prager's show, and just good people. I mean, really good people. How could you, how could you possibly go wrong with Lear Capital? Oh wait, how right wing news powers the gold IRA industry? Ads for gold coins have become a mainstay on Fox News, Newsmax, and other conservative outlets, even as regulators have accused companies of defrauding elderly clients. Well, I'm sure this isn't true about Lear Capital, right? This news story was written by Jeremy B. Merrill and Hannah Kozlowska. How Thank right-wing you. news powers the gold IRA industry. Ads for gold coins have become a mainstay on Fox News, Newsmax, and other conservative outlets, even as regulators have accused some companies of defrauding elderly clients. Dedicated viewers of Fox News are likely familiar with Lear Capital, a Los Angeles company that sells gold and silver coins. In recent years, the company's ads have been a constant presence on Fox Airwaves, warning viewers to protect their retirement savings from a looming pension crisis and dollar collapse. One such ad caught the attention of Terry White, a disabled retiree from New York. In 2018, White invested $174,000 in the coins, according to a lawsuit by the New York Attorney General, only to later learn that Lear charged a 33% commission. Over several transactions, White, 70, lost nearly $80,000, putting an enormous strain on his finances, said his wife, Jean, who blames Fox for their predicament, they're negligent, she said. A regretful White said he thought Fox wouldn't take a commercial like that unless it was legitimate. While the legitimacy of the gold retirement investment industry is the subject of numerous lawsuits. I mean, Dennis Prager wouldn't take a commercial like this, one of his biggest sponsors, right, unless it was legitimate. I mean... This bloke invested $174,000 in the coins only to later learn that Lear Capital charged a 33% commission. Right? He lost $80,000, putting an enormous strain on his finances. But Dennis Prager wouldn't back something like this, would he? Including allegations of fraud by federal and state regulators against Lear and other companies, its advertising has become a mainstay of right-wing media. The industry spends millions of dollars a year to reach viewers of Fox, Newsmax, and other conservative outlets, according to a Washington Post analysis of ad data and financial records, as well as interviews with industry insiders. Former Fox News host Bill O'Reilly and former New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani have promoted the coins, while ads for Lear's competitors have appeared on a podcast hosted by Senator Ted Cruz, Republican, Texas, and Newsmax broadcasts of former President Donald Trump's political rallies. An analysis by the Post of political newsletters, social media, podcasts, and a national database of television ads collected by the company Ad Impact found that pitches to invest in gold coins are a daily presence in media that caters to a right-wing audience and often echo conservative talking points about looming economic and societal collapse. 
The Post found no similar ads for gold retirement investments in mainstream or left-wing media sources in the databases. These so-called gold IRA companies are not publicly traded, so their revenue, profits, and ad budgets largely cannot be determined. Court documents filed by Lear say the company has about $200 million in annual revenue, Dale Whitaker, the former chief financial officer at another company, Augusta Precious Metals, said overall industry revenue likely approaches $1 billion a year. Over the past decade, more than 30 customers in 20 states. So Reasonable and Responsible asked me if I was embarrassed by my chat. Yeah, so asking you know, Julie to get naked, that, that embarrasses me, and so I need to be more assertive in the chat. I deleting tasteless comments like uh, like that. So yeah, thank you Reasonable and Responsible for reminding me that uh, I let you know way too much tasteless commentary go by and it embarrasses me. It makes me look really bad. It makes the show look really bad. And more important than me is that it's bad for you, right? It's a bad habit to get into. It's bad for the community. Right. Dennis Prager couldn't possibly be pushing end of the world theories in order to push products, could he? I mean, you want to be interesting, right? You want to be exciting. You, you want to get paid. So so what if uh, Lear Capital takes a 33% commission? That's that's not a uh, it's not a big deal, is it? Well, yeah, it it really is a big deal. I mean, it's a horrific horrific scam being promoted by almost all right-wing media. And so why does right-wing media promote so many horrific scams? It's just kind of par for the course. I mean, conservatism is just largely underridden by cons. Right? So Rick Polstein wrote in 2012 that he signed up to the email list of several influential magazines on the right. And he learned of the right-wing id. He learned of the 23-cent heart miracle. Washington, the medical industry and drug companies refused to tell you about. Right? Why would they? They're just leaving money on the table. Then came news of the oil field in the placenta. Right? So right wing media is underwritten by cons. Right? By you know deceptive advertising, you know, pushing fraudulent, bogus, frequently dangerous and destructive stuff. That's what pays for Fox News. That's what pays for, for talk radio. I mean these are bedtime stories meant for childlike minds, right? This is why I think most of right-wing news media, right-wing commentary is moronic, and it is subsidized by con games, right? So right-wing media, generally speaking, is in the business of producing childlike minds. Right? Dishonesty is basically demanded by the alarmist fundraising appeal that underwrites right-wing media. The real world doesn't work anything like right-wing media says or like the advertisements on right-wing media. Right? There's a huge distance from observable reality, but it is rhetorically required to succeed in conservatism incorporated in right-wing talk radio. Right? You're not going to see almost anything in real life that resembles the staples of Fox News and right-wing talk radio. Right? You just need to see how diabolical the left has become. He's unseen, but the redeemer, the hero who tells you the tale, he can see the innermost details of the most baleful conspiracies. Trust him. Send him your money, surrender your will, and the monster shall be banished for good. Right? You've got this theology of fear and a snake oil operation. They're just working together. Right? Two facets of the same coin. Right? You got the con selling 23 cent miracle cures for heart disease. And then the, the arguments about how the left is just destroying America wants to Joe Biden wants to wreck the economy. Right. Lying is basically an initiation into the conservative elite. I, I think Rick Perlstein, he's on the left, but he's got some good points here. Right. Right-wing media is just multi-layer marketing. you got the ones at the top, reap the rewards, and then they preen, pleased with themselves for mastering the con game. Closing the sale is just a question of writing out the lie, showing that you have the skill and the stones to just brazen it out, the savvy to ratchet up the stakes higher and higher, sneering at or ignoring your earnest, high-minded Mandarin gatekeepers. Right, or as one Romney aide put it, we're not going to let our campaign be dictated by fact-checkers. Back to this Washington Post article. Have sued a dozen gold IRA companies, including Lear. Federal regulators have sued four companies, two in the past year alone, claiming investors were systematically charged as much as triple the coin's value. Was Colin Liddell right about uh, Elliot Blatt being a wild animal? I sure hope not. 
I sure hope not. None of the cases have gone to trial, some are still pending. Of those that have been resolved, most have settled or been sent to arbitration, where outcomes are not made public. The companies have not admitted wrongdoing in any of the cases and say their customers have been adequately informed of the details of their purchases. Joe Rotunda, enforcement director at the Texas State Securities Board, said the industry is extraordinarily difficult to police because selling gold, even as a retirement investment, is extremely thinly regulated. Experts on commercial speech say... Okay, so this is embarrassing. This might be even more embarrassing than using profanity. That one of your major sponsors is running just a horrible con game and much of you know, right-wing media is a horrible con game, both the content and the advertising. That's why I'm doing show after show talking about how stupid and destructive and moronic and despicable, generally speaking, much of right-wing commentary, right-wing media, you know, right-wing punditry, right-wing talk radio is. Yeah, I'm following Colin Liddell's advice. <laughs> I got to keep Kevin, uh, Elliot Blatt on a leash. Don't you remember you told me you love... I still love you, Elliot. I just... I need to give you the lash once in a while. The spiritual lash to, to keep you keep you in line. This is a very... This is a very classy show. I'm a, I am don't know if you know. I'm a very respectable man. And these two Sheilas, like, lured me to a very plush Beverly Hills hotel, this Arvo, under completely false pretenses and tried to stick me with some $800 bill. And, like, I'm nobody's... Fool, all right. I'm nobody's victim, right? I, they wanted me to eat non kosher desserts, and I said, I, I can't. Like, I can't go into non kosher restaurant. Like, someone from my religious community might see me. I can go to a hotel and I can drink ice water, but I, I can't partake of your fleshly delights. I'm a, I'm a very respectable man. And they said, Oh, no, you'll be able to sneak in, right? You'll be able to hide. Like, we're, we're, we're meeting in the shadows. Right, it's all going to be very respectable. Right, we can we can you know order room service. You don't have to worry about it. But uh, I I don't play those games, man. I, I don't want to be underwritten by Lear Capital. Right, I, I don't want to hang out with the cruel children of billionaires, you know, mocking me for taking fright about being stuck with some you know eight hundred dollar uh, bill and all I wanted was a glass of ice water. Uh, this is time, uh, this is like, I'm coming down, like, I had some expectations, like, she took advantage of me with those photos, right, with the with the kind of the pouty look on her face, and how she built up this interaction, and it just all sounded so amazing, and then it just turned cruel, in a very plush Beverly Hills hotel. Uh, to just all the smaller glitches. And I want you to imagine just for a moment that all of these things, each one of these things is a piece of armor. And that's what that's what our visual tonight is going to be about. It's like we're, we're, we're all the things that we are willing for God to to remove is our armor, the, the stuff that we have. Uh... Right. So we come to this show to remove our armor. But that doesn't mean we let the id just rise up and start asking you know, young, pretty female commentators who do shows with Dennis Prager to reveal more of themselves than is modest. All right, we're not revealing that much of an armor. All right, keep the armor on your penis, guys. All right, let that be covered up, and and you know keep you know keep that chastity belt operating in the chat. All right, please. I, I don't want to look bad to Julie and Dennis. Um, we have we have developed because we needed to develop. It wouldn't be there if it didn't serve a purpose. But it, but once we, you know, the, the whole idea here is is you know we, I come out of I come out of battle in my, my suit of armor and you know want to go have a cup of coffee with somebody. It's it's inconvenient. Yeah, I, I wanted to like go out and have just a glass of ice water, man. I just wanted like a mint tea. I didn't want to be stuck with an eight hundred dollar hotel bill. Yes, it was very lavish. You know, Beverly Hills place, and you know, two you know, very nice, very charming, you know, very rich, you know, sophisticated women, uh, you know, a social class stratospherically above mine. Not that I was intimidated, but uh, you see, with the thought leaders, right? They're putting on this suit of armor. Here, I'll give you an analogy. So let's say I had some some job where I was like a security guard, you now where. Before I'd, I'd go on the job, like I'd, I'd strap on you know, something like this, like these tactical gloves. 
And when I strap on the old tactical gloves, you know, this kind of suit of armor, and I put on, say, a bulletproof vest, you know, strap on my, my gun, you know, my am ammo, and I put on my sunglasses, like, if I were to do all that, I'd feel like a completely different person. Like, I'd feel like I, I was ready to clean the streets and you know, ready to you know, protect the, the righteous and the true and the kind and the just and the good and fight for righteousness and decency and that I'd do my part about, you know, taking back the streets of L.A., right, if I was, like, licensed and bonded and insured and, you know, part of a very, you know, formidable and respectable organization, all right, I, I would step into a different persona, right? This wouldn't be just gentle luke meek and mild right this would be the person who would you know lay down the law within you know the proper confines of the law right if i strapped on the, this suit of armor but uh as my my therapist once said to me maybe maybe you'll only get well if you if you put down your weapons so you can have body armoring you know literally you know guns and bulletproof vests and you know fancy gloves and your your sunnies but you can also have body armoring with unnecessary muscular tension by putting yourself into particular alignments of your body that you know, keep you away from vulnerability, from honesty, from kindness. Right? Every emotion, right? every thought is only possible with a particular alignment of your body. If, you, if you're aligned differently, you can't experience that emotion. You, you can't progress in a certain line of thought. Convenient, you know. I want to, you know, I want to, I want to, you know, go to the movies and, and that armor is just clanking around. So that's that's where we're going to go with this. I'm gonna, I'm just going to read this to you, um, and I want you just to, to see if you can get this visual with me. The exact nature of these so-called defects of character, that's I, I say, AKA characteristics. The exact nature is self-care and self-defense. They are what we learned was necessary to cope with our environment through our, through our early days. To to uh, to the degree that these characteristics now prove counterproductive to our chosen path of psychological and spiritual growth, think of these as armor. However much armor we, ha we are wearing is exactly the amount of armor that we needed, we have needed. I read right, so I developed the habit of lying as a kid because I was trying to avoid getting hit by you know, older people who had power and authority and the ability to inflict you know, grievous amounts of bodily harm on me. And that was probably adaptive when I was a little kid, but then I maintain that habit and then I just tried to use it to my advantage as a character default of always lying when I got into trouble and then it became maladaptive. Read that to you again because this is a really important one and and my wife was reading this before and she said that's be sure to emphasize this this is about compassion however much armor we are wearing is exactly the amount of armor that we have needed uh, in parentheses I have we, we always this is about we always make sense even when we think we don't you know right so I took on lying as a, a way to stop getting hit stop getting beaten you know stop getting destroyed and then i took on fantasy uh and uh, the pursuit of you know sex or the pursuit of success the pursuit of attention all right these these became my my character defaults they were the best tools that i had at the time to deal with life right we all do the best we can with the tools we have that are available so you know we don't have to hate ourselves for being alcoholics drug addicts sex addicts you know under owners debtors marijuana addicts Right, we're doing the best we can with the tools we have at our disposal. We, we, we come by this, our armor honestly. Because we have gathered these coping mechanisms, that is this armor, unconsciously, we are not inclined. Right, so our bad character traits, right? Using too much pornography, you know, lying unnecessarily, being cruel, contemptuous, uh, manipulating other people, trying to get them to you know, pick up some kind of $800 you know, afternoon tea bill at a very plush hotel, right? These, these are the things we, we do because we have adapted to them as the most successful ways we have found in our lives to meet our needs. Find to perceive ourselves as separate from our armor. Clanking around in our heavy metal suits is our normal. In fact, at the beginning of our recovery journeys, we are identified with our armor, we are our armor. You know, I think about, when I think about that, I think about just, just the identity issues I had alone when I, when I quit drinking. I mean, it was like, yeah, we know ourselves by our body tension levels, by the way we align ourselves, by our defense mechanisms, by the persona that we put on, by the way that we shield away, you know, scary intimacy, by the way we try to, you know, tense up and keep the, the shame down. Right, I was, I was embarrassed and ashamed by this interaction at a very plush 
you know, Beverly Hills Hotel. I had uh, I had some high hopes. I was in a very vulnerable state, and they laughed at me and they mocked me, and it didn't feel good. I mean, I didn't. I literally didn't feel like I knew, had a clue about who I was or what what, what mattered in my life because I, I was so identified with alcohol. The armor was necessary at one at one or, or various points along the way. But as adults in pursuit of improving our, our mental, physical, and spiritual well-being, wearing this heavy armor is cumbersome, to say the least. It certainly interferes with the development of, of healthy relationships. I mean, think about it. Yeah, so a lot of traits that uh, may have served us when we were three, five, seven, nine, right? they stop serving us once we become 11, 21, 31, 41, 51. You know, with my armor on, you can't even see me. I'm just a guy inside the armor. Imagine, 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 to do this, imagine. And you see, with, with the thought leaders, you know the the persona that they put on you know i'm so honest i'm just so dedicated to the truth this is how extreme i am in my pursuit of truth and decency and uh, the show is in a substantial part you know underwritten by scams and the show itself in substantial part is a scam a, a con game a destructive exercise in epistemic sabotage while under the guise of i'm just here to to help people improve their lives and become more moral. In this, imagine me standing in front of you. Just, just, just I'm standing in front of you in all my armor, uh, and clanking around there. And um, I just stand there, and then I just hold my arms out. I stretch my armored arms out and say, "Come here, give me a hug." You know, imagine that hug with that with that armor. You know, it's it's not exactly the the, the picture of intimacy. Okay, enter step six. Uh, we'll we'll review. We're we're entirely ready to to have God remove all these defects of character. I mean, and think about all the weird interfering muscular tension patterns going on with uh, Ron DeSantis. He's been far less impressive the more we've gotten to know him. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. He's got this weird head thing he's been doing the more he's on camera in uncomfortable settings. I don't know what it is, if it's a tick, but he does this like thing where like, I, I haven't even announced and it's a little jarring. It's a little off-putting. It's almost like a robot that hit like a chip misfire. That's not good. That's the kind of thing that makes you, oh, I mean, Howard Dean, who was going to be the Democratic nominee a number of years ago, got booted out because he yelled, oh, we're going to Iowa, we're going to South Carolina. They booted him out for yelling. So weird robotic misfire could definitely get you thrown out. Little things like that are not good. And he hasn't been dealing very well with the press. And he has. Yeah, Ron DeSantis just makes you feel uncomfortable because he's ill at ease with himself. He's ill at ease in his body. He's got you know all sorts of weird interfering muscular tension patterns, which reflect weird interfering emotional patterns and soul patterns and cognitive patterns, right? What we think, what we feel, it is radiated out through our body. Everything we think and feel takes place within certain alignments of our body. And if our body was aligned differently, we couldn't think and feel as we do. Hasn't been impressing people on his little world tour because he went to four or five countries overseas. The reports back are very negative about how he failed to wow. And he didn't leave anybody saying, oh, wow, there goes a president. You know, there goes a future president. So we have to see. We have to see how this plays out. It's anybody's for the grabbing right now, if it's not going to be Donald Trump, anybody could get it. But you, the smart money, of course, is on. So if you're uncomfortable in your body, you're uncomfortable in yourself. If you have constant, you know, back pain, neck pain, you know, head pain, shoulder pain, ankle pain, thigh pain. And right? if you're ill at ease when you walk down the street, when you try to reach into the back of the refrigerator, right? You're not just ill at ease in your body. You're also ill at ease in your thinking with other people, in your emotions. Right? Everything we say and do and think and try to achieve, we do it with our body. Right? And every alignment of the body brings with it a, a predilection to certain types of emotions and certain types of thoughts. While other thoughts and emotions are only possible with a, a particular alignment of the body, which if you are strongly armored, right? if you are strongly closed off, you can't even access often the more vulnerable, gentle, you know, sweet, loving, nurturing emotions. Character. Bill Wilson writes that this is the step that separates the men from the boys. You know, a little misogyny here. The men from the boys. For my purposes this evening, step six United is the beginning of separating the person from the armor. How vulnerable am I likely to feel after being so used to, so identified with this suit of armor when I begin to take it off? Peace by. Right. So when people put on armor is by using a word salad, right? Like uh, think about Ken Brown, 
uh, Bronze Age Pervert, uh, Dennis Prager, Ben Shapiro, uh, Jean-Francois Garopi. They're constantly talking about things they don't know much about. But they just spout words that uh, are a much more of a a much more of a performance. They they are much more of a s acting as a signaling function that they are high status and that they are bestowing you know wisdom and profundity on you than rather actually conveying meaning, right? And so, what kind of weird off-putting alignments of the body do you have to be in to put on this phony performance? Like Dennis Prager has had back pain all his life. Do you think uh, the lies and the phony performances that he gives right, don't take their toll in his body? He's had you know, back pain all his life. He's had at least three major back surgeries. Right? When your character is deformed, when what you're doing is deformed, when you are promoting damaging you know, word salad mixes uh, just designed to make you sound really profound and as the oracle and you're the one laying a tapestry of meaning over the universe, but it's phony, it's bogus, it's destructive, it's a giant con. You don't think that that then takes an enormous toll on, on somebody's body, particularly on the, in their back. Who's that famous investor out of Nebraska who, when he gets back pain thinking about a stock, he sells it, right? The back knows, right? The, the back is often the best indicator about what's going on with you and what's going on with your soul. And when you're crooked in your soul, when you're crooked in the messages that you're delivering, when you're crooked in the, you know, the advertisers that you're endorsing, when you're running a crooked game, right? Don't be surprised when your back becomes crooked and your whole head, neck, back alignment gets crooked and it fells you and reduces you to a wheelchair and to multiple back surgeries. But there's no back surgery solution for a spiritual problem. Right? There's no chiropractor, there's no doctor who's going to come along and straighten you out when it is the perverse message that you are putting out that is distorting your musculature, distorting how you're aligned, is inducing all sorts of needless stress and tension in your soul, in your emotions, in your speech, in your head, neck, back relationship. They, they all run together. Right? So when some people start lying, they start feeling back pain. And the back pain goes away when they start becoming honest and forthright, start cleaning up the mess that they've created, start making amends to people, right? The back pain starts to go away. Too profound for the average mind to... Con right, this is what the con game that the thought leaders and the pundits uh, are putting out there, that they've got a message that's just too profound for... You know, the average person to be understand that they're just going to you know dribble down dribble down you know little little drops of honey essentially from god right dennis prager says that uh, his values are the torah's values he and the torah just think alike the torah comes from god so essentially he's claiming that he and god think alike and he's here on a divine mission now, you don't think that's going to put you know some crookedness into your back with that sign kind of uh crooked thinking yes but it is that's not the characteristic if it was Dave Rubin would be at the tip top because he's a despicable right this is Christopher Kavanaugh Matthew Brown from decoding the gurus talking about Dave Rubin who would love to be a guru but is just not very good at it well human but he's not a like a, a the top tier guru not a particularly accomplished guru, no. Um, okay, that's good. So let's start with the first one. Uh, I don't like this one because it's galaxy brained, galaxy brainness. Um, so this comes from that viral meme of the you know pff, mind expanding cosmos stuff. The guy in the turtleneck sweater. Um, so uh, that says a lot of it. I mean, this is someone that presents ideas that they present as being too profound for the average mind. Right. Think about how Ken Brown operates or Jean-Francois Garopi operates or Bronze Age Pervert, right? This is their modus operandi. To comprehend, right? And important, this is different from Einstein talking about quantum mechanics. And uh, Bernard says, does anyone doubt that Ron DeSantis actually could go in the USA? You might want someone better, but surely Ron DeSantis is capable. Completely agree. Yes, I was talking about Warren Buffett when his back hurts when he's thinking about a stock he knows it's time to sell yeah dave rubin just wants a good conversation 
mechanics or general relativity, which many of us might not be able to comprehend very well. This is stuff like deep, Deepak Chopra, like linking quantum mechanics to to some sort of special waves of... Yeah, I mean, this is what all gurus and thought leaders do. They take all sorts of completely disparate uh, stories and fields and, and disciplines and start weaving them together. And uh, I guess I probably do quite a bit of that. So I'm somewhere between 10% and 90% a failed guru. Like, I, I hope it's not more than 10%, but my God, what if it's like 85%? consciousness or something it's superficially intellectually rarefied but it you know in closer examination it actually makes little sense so one of the things right so if you're peddling you know a superficial you know, bogus false message to try to build yourself up you don't think that that takes a toll on your back you know, walking around with all this unnecessary body armoring and posturing uh, creating some weird persona to make yourself feel more important piece when I begin to let it go or ask God to remove it. You know, I made the point to myself thinking about that. Hell, I, I get uncomfortable when it gets to, I, I get, I love, I love my sport, my sport jacket so much when it gets to be summer and it's too hot to wear a jacket. I, you know, I have trouble taking that off sometimes. You know, so very last thing I want to say, one of, one of my, this brings up to one of the therapeutic one-liners, these things that we call nutshells. And this is a favorite of mine and it fits here with this ar the armor imagery. And it is, it says this simply beneath who you are not, you will discover who you are. I'll just do that one more time. Beneath who you are not, you will discover who you are. So, Yeah, when you start letting go of these unnecessary personae, this unnecessary body armoring, start letting go of this unnecessary muscular tension, unnecessary compression, unnecessary pulling down on yourself, unnecessary restrictions on yourself, you know, unnecessary uh, character defaults of lying or cruelty, unnecessary mockery, deceit, Right, then, then you start to discover kind of softer, gentler, more nurturing parts of yourself. To me, the self-honesty is about letting go of our armor, being willing to put it down. Right, so to, to be a guru in, in the, the modern sense, you can't be self-honest. You, you can't admit that you are contrived, that you are putting on you know, a giant con game. But in the case of, the, of step six is actually the, the humility of becoming ready for that, to, for those, these character defects, for this armor to be removed. You know, not just about me, not just not me doing it. It's my, whatever my relation to that higher power is, I'm ready for this. To, I'm re right. Are you ready to let go of self-defeating tension patterns? Are you ready to let go of self-defeating personae? Are you ready to let go of character defaults of dishonesty or cruelty or exploitation or you know, disproportionate pursuit of lust to, to an extent that it uh, doesn't serve you and doesn't serve the people around you. Right? You're ready to you know, think a second time about your character defaults that are cramping and crimping and diminishing your life and damaging the people who interact with you. I'm ready, for, I'm ready to enter this part phase of my life that is going to be characterized by radical, you know, and sometimes very frightening self-honesty. Yeah, Laponius, people who lie all the time, figuratively or literally, always looking over their shoulder to see if their lies are catching up with them, causes severe body tension, emotional tension, intellectual tension. That's what I got. Fantastic. I'm who had uh, studied with Wilhelm Reich, and Reich in the 1920s and 30s is the man who put the body into psychotherapy, and he wrote a lot about what he called muscular armor, mm -hmm. that this idea of how we protect our vulnerabilities, how we take care of ourselves as best we can as kids, um, isn't just something we do in our mind, that it's very much something we do in our body. Mm -hmm. And he noticed as a young psychoanalyst that having people lay on the couch and free associate and do dream analysis um, had value, but it wasn't helping them change nearly as much as he was interested in helping them change. So when I give an Alexander Technique lesson, and in almost every lesson, there's a table turn where someone lies down on a table on their back, fully clothed, and I will gently bring my hands to the back of their head and their neck. And I am connecting, th through my hands are like jumper cables. I'm connecting my central nervous system to theirs. And there's frequently a letting go of unnecessary personae, letting go of unnecessary muscular tension, uh, letting go of you know, many alignments of the, the, the body and of the musculature and of the mind and the soul and, and the spirit that are unnecessary. Uh, letting go of unnecessary tension, 
you know, letting go of holding things down because you're so ashamed. And people just often start crying. And I just simply bring my hand softly and gently to the back of their head where they're lying on their back, knee up, knees up, their, their head gently supported by, say, a copy of my book on American Jewish journalism. And I just gently bring my hands to, to the back of their head and to their neck, and I just stand there using most of my attention on my own use, thinking about, is my own neck free? Is my own head releasing forward and up? Are my own shoulders releasing to the side? Is my whole back you know, lengthening and widening? Are my hips free? Right? Are my knees free? Are my ankles free? Right? If I put primary concern on my own use, that then transmits through my hands, and then if I'm at ease with myself, that transmits to the client that I'm working with, and it's very common for, for the tears just to start flowing, as they let go of all these unnecessary holding patterns. So he noticed people would talk about very traumatic experiences they had had as children, as adults, with no feeling. Yeah, so when I'm giving a table turn and, or in an Alexander Technique lesson as people learning to let go of unnecessary tension, right? When they start to let go of these false personae, the lies, the, the cramping and the crimping and the, you know, the false selves and the false posturing and the unhelpful alignments that they've been using to go through life, then often comes out something beautiful and soft and, and vulnerable and wanting to share, wanting to connect. And he was perplexed by that. He also noticed certain patterns of tension in the facial muscles of his patients and in their necks and shoulders and in their breathing and in the rest of their body. And he began to physically work with those areas of their body that were so tense, were so armored. And much to his surprise and the surprise of his patients, strong outpourings of emotion began to occur for these patients. They would begin to cry when they hadn't cried for decades. They would become angry, angry, even enraged, become fearful, even terrified. Okay, so some people who, as a hobby, they're hurting people, such as playing tackle football or they're, they're boxers or in their particularly vicious line of work. And they take up a few Alexander Technique lessons. They discover they, they no longer want to hurt other people. They, they no longer want to hurt themselves. They might want to go study music or, or painting or poetry instead of you know, engaging in you know, vicious hobbies or vicious businesses. Depending on what he was asking them to do with the breathing and what he was doing with the musculature. So I don't want to go more into detail, but I would... Most people carry so much unnecessary tension in their face, but particularly in their jaw. So if you want to know a proper alignment for your jaw, just say the word Boston and notice what that does with your lower jaw. And I carry way too much tension still in my jaw, but Boston, Boston, right? Where your, where your lower jaw ends when you say Boston, your lower jaw should release you know, down and away. That should be where your lower jaw is hanging out most of the time, Boston. So most people kind of crunch their, their teeth together and that's almost always maladaptive was so fascinated by that and I thought my body had so little to do with the emotions that I experienced and didn't experience um, that I ended up studying with the guy Nathaniel introduced me to Chuck Kelly and for about 15 years that's the kind of work that that I did with people because it's still when, when we talk about emotions we talk about the feelings we have but we also talk about the expressive movements our emotions want to make when, we, when we're sad we want to what we want to cry when we find something really funny what do we want to do we want to laugh when we're scared, we want to either freeze or run away, right? When we're angry, what do we want to do? We want to hit or bite or kick or hurt somebody else, right? And obviously, we learn and need to learn in the course of our development how to regulate and contain all of those feelings. But I just love that you use the metaphor of armor tonight, Tom, because it's more than a metaphor. <laughs> it's very much something that we are all subconsciously, almost always, because we've been doing it since we were little, little folk, okay? It's something well, that... And you don't think that all these right-wing gurus who are putting on a persona and you know, preaching a, a false bogus message, right? you don't think that's accompanied by all sorts of you know, unnecessary muscular tension? Thing that um, this is tends Matt Brown. to be an indicator of it is when a, um, uh, a figure is linking together these disparate concepts. I think all you need to know to really understand the, the differences between men and women is that whatever men hunt and women gather or all you need to know is that you know men have two modes they have a parasitic mode and a symbiotic mode or something right there's this um you know this sort of linking of concepts which which might be 
appealing superficially, but really have nothing much to it underneath. So Jordan Peterson famously linked the social behavior of lobsters to to understand male behavior and their dominance hierarchies or whatever. Um, Brett Weinstein, one of our favorites, um, we'd like to mention this. He he used evolutionary theory to help understand why the Nazis chose to invade Russia in Operation Barbarossa. Um, and there's there's heaps more of stuff you could draw from from the world of Wu, you know, um, you know, linking secret talismans and ancient civilizations to to aliens, or linking, you know, electromagnetic frequencies and fields to something about balancing your chakras or your your health or whatever. Um, you know, it, it's this galaxy brain thing. It's basically you don't restrict yourself to. Um, you know, providing some degree of information or insight on a specific topic, what you're doing is you're stepping back and you're linking together things from all over the shop to create this, this, this tapestry of meaning that covers kind of everything, life, the universe and everything. Yeah. So if you don't like the term galaxy brain, as you can uh, do what I did in the talk I gave recently on the topic and call it po polymorphic ability or claimed <laughs> polymorphic ability. Um, and, and alongside all the things that Matt mentioned, there tends to be a dismissal of restriction on expertise that, you know, people suggesting that you should stay in your lane or whatever are, are doing so just to chain you down um, and, and an exaggeration of their own competence uh, in disparate fields. Mm -hmm. It might also be related to an overestimation of how many paradigms you can run simultaneously all at once. Right. So you don't think that that takes a toll on your body, right? Uh, on your alignment, on your tension levels, if you're, they're preaching, you know, a false gospel. You know, making a very good living from it, right? Getting a lot of fame and fortune from it, but you're essentially preaching a false gospel, which is what almost all thought leaders are doing, which is what almost all gurus are doing, which is what almost all you know syndicated right wing talk show hosts are doing, which is what you know most of the right wing media machine is doing. And w, I want to say also, Roger, that the, the stuff the, the stuff that's, that's just come out in the last 20, 25 years about about trauma and, and, and yeah. trauma memories and all this is, has, has reinforced that so much. And it's like, you know, and it's, it's like and I not specialized in what you're talking about at all. I'm fascinated with it. But it's, it's like, you know, I, I, you know, we, we watch our we watch our clients physically as much as we listen to their words. Yeah, because it, it'll, yeah. you know, it'll tell you. So anyway, thanks. <laughs> no, I appreciate that because that's right. And the, the major form now that is the most popular body oriented work is called somatic experiencing, at least the major form. Right, so I can stand up here and say all sorts of words, but what's really going on with me, you should be able to just read it in my face, in the alignment of my body, right, in the relationship between my head, neck, and back, in, in what's going on in my shoulders, how much unnecessary tension am I carrying in my lower jaw, around my eyes, around my lips, in my forehead. Right? Words are cheap. My, my perspective, but... Emotions, as I was saying, they want us to move. And if we're going to stop the experience and expression of those emotions. Hey, you think very different thoughts when you're standing as opposed to sitting. You think very different thoughts when you are walking as opposed to sitting. You think very different thoughts when you're at work, right? When you're at work, when you're out of the house, you tend to behave better. You tend to you know, put more effort into doing the right thing. You tend to be more conscientious, right? When you're working outside of the house, than when you're at home. When people get home, they tend to become more slovenly. Morally, aesthetically, psychologically, spiritually, religiously, right? People tend to become much more slovenly at home compared to when they're out and about at work around other people. We need to tighten muscles throughout our body to what? To prevent those movements, to prevent ourselves from crying, prevent ourselves from showing excitement and so on. Now to tie this into step six, a lot of our characteristics, character defects, coping mechanisms are built in. They are part of our muscular armory, as you're saying. They are mm -hmm. part of our self-protectiveness. And as we open up, initially just by beginning to acknowledge the holding, acknowledge the defects. And Laponia says, what effect is constantly pushing a government-approved agenda have on one's back? I don't know because I don't really follow people who do that. So if it's a destructive agenda, then I would think it'd have a negative effect on your back. If it's a neutral agenda, I don't think it'd probably have any effect on your back. But I remember I was dating this woman. She was an economist. She, she got a PhD from a free market economics program, but she had to struggle to get a first job. And her first job was promoting subsidies that went completely against her free market principles. But when you, you take a job, you're effectively a slave. And ideally, you don't take jobs that go completely against your principles, but sometimes you need to do that.
right? It's not a horrible thing, right? It's not going to really change uh, America. It's not going to change the economy, whether or not you, you know, go to work for an organization that's con treat completely contrary to your principles. As, as an employee, you are a tool. You are a slave of the owner. And sometimes that is the most judicious choice you can make. Right? We, we don't often get to work for businesses that we 100% believe in. And if we 100% believe in our business, we probably got blinders on. Right? Acknowledge the issues. As we do that, we also begin to change physically. And, and people will comment on that. As we start to open up emotionally, we also begin to open up physically. And through acknowledging our imperfections, is what Carl Rogers said, who I am, what I am is good enough if I would only be it openly, right? If I would only learn to be it more openly. So the first step for me is just starting with awareness and starting with acknowledgement and acceptance. That's what Pema Chodron is all about in those quotes. Be with what is, not with what I'd like to have happening. Be with what is. Um, so I'm and Laponia says these guru busters are working 100% in the service of the COVID agenda. Everything they do ties back to that. Well, if you mean by the COVID agenda, the agenda of the ruling class with regard to COVID, my understanding of the agenda of the ruling class with regard to COVID was that it was above average. It wasn't perfect, wasn't great. It varied in location, but overall, I would say the elites of the ruling class did an above average job with regard to COVID. I won't, I won't go further, further than that, but obviously I appreciate the heck out of you starting with an uh, imagery for all of us that we are all more or less encased in this subconscious armor that we can shed ourselves of with time and perseverance, you know? So thanks, Tom. And, um, and thanks.